The Village of Yorton is an angelic depiction of English country life in the 1980s. It's a net curtain village where the vicar strikes up conversation with passers-by and a place where everyone knows everyone. It's the kind of place that doesn't truly exist anymore, and in a way, Everybody's Gone to the Rapture is a eulogy to this lifestyle. The village stands eerily silent, and all the citizens have vanished without a trace, and it's up to you to figure out what happened there. That's the premise of this latest game from The Chinese Room, the British game development studio responsible for Dear Esther. While that game basically invented the genre of walking simulators, Rapture strives to tell a much more considered story, which feels something like The Archers meets When the Wind Blows. It's probably that father, Jeremy, spreading it around while he tries to bully everyone into donations for the summer fete. Seems very quiet in the village, actually, Wendy. Not much bullying to be done. Oh, father, I didn't know you were here. Clearly. When you start the game, you're given no real objective right off the bat. Rather, it's your own curiosity that drives you forward. Your journey will take you deep into the village, where it's immediately apparent that things are not right. Mysterious orbs of light are scattered around the town, and finding these will prompt a small radio tuning minigame before revealing a flashback about the village's troubled past. You'll want to find as many of these sequences as possible since they flesh out the story, and finding all of them requires you to do some serious exploring around the town. We did try, but they've closed all the roads and you can't get through, and, and then Georgie and Ben said they had headaches, and then they started bleeding. And... Inquisitive players will also find additional scenes hidden inside houses, back gardens, or by other points of interest. These moments simply start by approaching them, and they can help paint a larger picture of the village and its community. Events in the flashbacks do not always unfold chronologically, so in a way, the real challenge of this game comes in as you try to mentally stitch together the overarching narrative by playing as the village's historian and librarian. You get as much out of the game as you're willing to put into it, and piecing together the game's story is consistently rewarding. The game is broken up into six chapters, each one is set in a new location within the village and serves to explore the backstory of one of the key inhabitants. Each chapter offers a unique window and insight into each character and how they come to terms with the cataclysm. It's great to get all these different perspectives and it later up some very poignant and human moments that finishes the arc of the main characters. These sequences are easily the highlights of the game, but it's a shame that they can be entirely missable if you don't find every orb within each given chapter. While heavily reliant on exploration, it's curious that the game is reluctant to give the player much freedom when it comes to moving around. The default walking speed is so slow that it can make travelling seem like a chore at times. When you first enter a new chapter it's okay because there's a lot to see and do, but after being in the same area for a long time the walk speed can really start to grate on you. Going long distances is an uninviting prospect, and god help you if you want to go backtracking for clues. The game doesn't tell you this, but there is actually a run button, although its effects are not immediately noticeable. Holding it builds up momentum over the course of a few seconds and gradually your movement speed will increase. But even when at full pelt, it feels far too slow and you'll be squeezing that run button for dear life in the vain hope that you'll burst into a hearty sprint. Spoiler alert, it doesn't happen. At least you'll have something nice to look at while you're walking around though, because this game is stunning. Each of the game's chapters is told during a different time of the day, and the change in the light not only looks amazing, but it gives each portion of the village its own personality. At times it can almost look photorealistic, especially the interiors where you can count the individual dust particles. My two favourite things would probably have to be the way the inside of this pub distorts through the window. Just look at that. And this sign that you'll see in the first five minutes. I just love the idea that someone has researched and lovingly recreated a classic British road sign. It looks great, and it's one of the many little details that will make you smile. The sound design blends gorgeously with the presentation of this game, and it nails the British countryside setting. Less natural sounding noises often signal you to the next piece of the puzzle, so you'll need to follow your ears and not just your eyes in some cases. What will probably impress you the most is the game's soundtrack. String instruments blend elegantly with flutes creating a gorgeous sound that perfectly suits the countryside. Choir singers creep in to punctuate more significant moments, while generally the tone of the music finds a place between peaceful and haunting, like a well-tended graveyard. The voice acting is also very good. Each and every character gives an utterly convincing read, and after you get into the game, you'll instantly start to recognise the figures by their voices alone. It's worth mentioning that the game's development team have never featured character models in their games. This is probably because the studio is very small, so creating and animating humans would have taken a lot of resources on their part. Facial animations in games have come a long way, but it would have been a gigantic task for an independent studio to construct convincing character models to tell their story. The weight of each scene is successfully carried solely by the voice acting, and I feel that seeing a 3D character melodramatically act out each dialogue sequence would have cheapened the experience. It's an excellent example of a studio being creative with its limitations, and I love the way the characters are presented as glowing silhouettes reminiscent of the Hiroshima lovers.
For how beautiful this game looks, it's a huge shame that the game has not been fully optimised to run on PC. While playing I ran into several moments of stuttering and had an inconsistent frame rate throughout, which is also why this video occasionally looks a bit choppy. Even turning down the settings doesn't completely solve the problem, so you have to take it in your stride, but in a worst case scenario it can really take you out of the moment. The story is what will ultimately carry you through the game however. While the implication of the rapture is perhaps not as interesting as the developers make it out to be, what really carries the experience is exploring the personal relationships between the characters and unravelling their individual stories. I'm sorry. That's alright father. Listen, you go on ahead. I'll just rest here a little longer. Sleep well. The country village also makes for an unconventional but compelling setting for a video game. Playing Everybody's Gone to the Rapture can be an occasionally frustrating experience thanks to the slow movement speed and some technical issues, but if you're willing to stick with it, you'll be rewarded with a memorable journey back in time along the old English countryside.